Hey everyone, I'm Otis. I became a millionaire when I was still in high school and I made all that money myself. I made a decision. I worked really hard and was able to reach my goal. But ultimately, I ended up losing all the money I made. It all happened within a year and a half. How did I manage to get rich so quickly and then lose it all just as fast? You'll find out when you hear my story. My dad died when I was little. He had worked at a paint factory for years. He had been exposed to so many chemicals that his body couldn't take it. After that, my mom had to work two jobs to support our family. On weekdays, she worked at a flower shop and on weekends at a pizzeria. My sister and I barely saw her. She'd leave before we got up and come back after we'd gone to bed. That was the only way she could manage to pay all the bills. One morning, we woke up and mom was home. She had a fever and a bad cough. She stayed in bed for three weeks. We realized during that time that if mom couldn't work, we'd literally go hungry. We didn't have any savings for situations like these. The fridge was empty within a week and the pantry within two weeks. By the third week, there was nothing left to eat. My mom still wasn't feeling great, but she had to go back to work. That's when I started thinking about money. At first, it wasn't about getting rich or anything. I wondered how I could help my mom so that at least she wouldn't have to work on weekends. If you come from a poor family, you often grow up to be poor too. My grandparents had problems with money all their lives. Sadly, poverty is passed down through generations. It's not easy to break that cycle, but I was determined to do it. I got a piece of paper and wrote, how can I make money? I searched the internet for hours. I wrote down everything I found. Then I began to try the ideas that made sense to me. The first thing I decided to try was pretty ridiculous. I was going to pick up money that people dropped. Initially, this seemed like a great idea because I was going to go to places where people were likely to drop their money, like vending machines. Let's say you drop a coin while you're putting money into a vending machine. What do you do? You casually look at the floor. If you don't see the coin right away, you reach in your pocket for another one. So I started going around to vending machines after school to see if I could find any loose change. The other place I thought I could find money was restaurant drive throughs You have to reach your hand out of the car window to make a payment and get change. If some change drops to the floor, few people would get out of their car to pick it up. <laughs> so in addition to vending machines, I also went to drive throughs to look for money. Did I find any? Yes, but very little. It would take me a hundred years to make some decent money like this. So I decided to give up on this strategy after a week. It was a bad idea to depend on finding change on the floor. I also crossed out winning the lottery, finding oil in the backyard, and suddenly inheriting money from an unknown relative from my list of potential options. I had to find more rational ways to make money. I looked through my list again. When I was researching ways to make money, I had made a section called entrepreneurship and noted some ideas. The first one was starting a YouTube channel then starting a website, and then making a mobile game. When I saw the next one, I stopped. Finding a unique product idea. Wait a second, I actually already had such an idea. In fact, when I told people about it, they all said it would totally sell. Wanna know what this great idea is? An umbrella for dogs. I started <laughs> jumping with joy. I found what I was looking for. Every time I took our dog Taco out in the rain, I always wondered, why isn't there a special umbrella for dogs? Taco would always get so wet during his walk, and then he'd make a huge mess at home when we came back. A dog umbrella would solve this problem. And on top of that, dogs wouldn't get cold from being wet. My sister had a small umbrella that she used when she was younger, so I decided to use it for my first prototype. After a lot of work, I finally did it. At first, Taco didn't like it and tried to get rid of it, but I was sure he'd love it when he saw how well it worked when it rained. I was proud of it. It looked great. More importantly, it was functional. All dog owners would want to buy this. But now there was a huge obstacle ahead. 
how would I be able to mass produce it? Also, people had to be able to buy it in places like supermarkets and pet shops. How could I manage that? I didn't have any money, so I needed to find an investor. But who would trust a 15-year-old with their investment? And even if they did, could I trust them? What if they stole my idea? How could I protect myself? An hour ago, I was super happy, but now I was so stressed. I started thinking, I can never do this. I got my hopes up for nothing. Here was a great opportunity, but I couldn't make it work. Then I had an idea. Only someone around my age would support me. I remembered a young entrepreneur that I saw on YouTube. What do I have to lose? I'll just DM him on Instagram, I said to myself. I trusted him, so I told him a bit about my idea and asked, would you support something like this? I gave him my phone number. He called the next day. I had <gasps> unbelievable challenges when mm -hmm. I was building my business. So I try to support good ideas as much as I can. Let's meet tomorrow and talk. I think this product has a customer base, he said. Things moved really quickly after that. I had a partner now. I felt like I was in a dream. We started working immediately. We got a professional team to help us finalize the design of the umbrella. Then we found a factory that would produce it. We started advertising on social media when we got the first umbrellas. They received a lot more attention than we anticipated. Almost every dog that was out in the rain now had one of our umbrellas. I was so proud of myself, and just as I had dreamed, I was making a lot of money. I wanted to buy a house in the best neighborhood and move there with my family. I looked at houses with a real estate agent. I found a really beautiful one. I wanted to show it to my mom before buying it, but my mom said she didn't want to move. I can't change my life so quickly. Plus, we lived here with your dad for many years. I don't want to leave our memories behind, she said. I was so surprised. I insisted, but she wouldn't change her mind. If you want, you can live in that house. It's your right. Your sister can come and stay with you from time to time. But I have a condition. Don't drop out of school. I want you to at least graduate high school, she said. I went to the office the next day. I told my partner I was going to buy a house. He said, don't do it. He had just partnered with a new venture that was trading cryptocurrencies. Rent the house instead of buying it. You should invest that money in Bitcoin. You'll make enough money to buy three houses next year, he said. I trusted him, so I followed his advice. I wanted to support his new firm anyways. So I invested all my money in cryptocurrency, or Bitcoin to be precise. Our umbrellas were selling like hotcakes. I still couldn't believe how quickly my dreams had come true. But I didn't handle getting rich so quickly very well. I was still just a kid. I spent so much money on stuff I didn't need. For example, once I saw an <gasps> Iron Man costume online that was the same as the one used in the movie. I didn't even look at the price and just bought it. Now I realize that costume cost as much as a luxury car. By the way, I did have three amazing sports cars, but I was too young to have a license, so I couldn't even drive them. That was another weird thing that I did. Three or four months went by. One day, my partner called me in for a meeting. He said our sales were falling very quickly. The dog umbrella was easy to imitate, so we had a lot of competition now. Business was great when ours was the only one on the market, but not anymore. If we didn't do something, we'd go bankrupt. We immediately came up with new product ideas. For example, we made a raincoat for dogs, but it didn't sell. I really thought it would. We had thousands of raincoats that we couldn't sell, so we lost a lot of money. Around the same time that the umbrella sales plummeted, the worst thing happened. Bitcoin, which I had invested all my money in, lost a lot of value overnight. My partner said, don't worry, it'll go back up again but it didn't. I lost all my money. I couldn't even pay my rent. I sold the cars and whatever I had in the house. That money lasted only three to four months. Normally, <laughs> that money should have lasted me three or four years, but I had gotten used to spending a lot and couldn't stop even when I didn't have the same income anymore. When I ran out of money, I moved back to my mom's house. 
I only had the Iron Man costume with me because I couldn't find anyone to buy it. My mom said, welcome home, and hugged me. I'd been sending her money every month. It turned out that she saved it all because she kept on working. This money is for college for you and your sister. You proved yourself once. When you finish school, I'm sure you'll be successful again. In fact, you'll be even more successful because you'll have learned from your mistakes, she said, making me feel better. You might find it weird, but I wasn't so sad after losing all my money. Now I understand why. My life had changed so quickly. When I was rich, it all felt like a dream. So when I lost it all, it still felt like it was a dream. Since it was all like a dream, it didn't make sense to be upset. Hi, everyone. I'm Justin. I have to go to school every day with two bodyguards. It sounds pretty cool when I say that. But when you find out what happened to me, you'll see it's not exactly something that you'd want for yourself. My dad is a truck driver. For years, he drove around the whole country. We'd only see him four or five days a month at most. Even though we barely spent time together, we had this strong bond. On the days when he was home, we used to play board games. He would always let my sister or me win. I miss those days a lot. We were a really happy family. I was happy at home and at school as well. I think that's because I had the best group of friends in the city. Matt, Jamie, Chris and I have been friends since kindergarten. We went to the same schools. We promised each other that we would stay together until high school's over. Last year, Matt's family moved to another city. Matt convinced them to let him stay here with us. He lives with his aunt right now. Things were going really well, and then something seemingly good happened, which changed our lives. My dad has been playing the lottery for years. Occasionally, he would win small prizes. But one day, he hit the jackpot and won the biggest prize in years. So one morning, we woke up as one of the richest families in the city. Many people dream of winning the lottery. My dad quit his job as a truck driver. We moved to a nicer neighborhood, bought a bigger house. From now on, we could buy anything we wanted. This is the good part. And then there's the flip side. A lot of news outlets talked about my dad winning the jackpot. Everyone knew the truck driver who got rich overnight. Relatives and friends who my parents hadn't seen in years started coming over. But why? To celebrate with us? Of course not. Some were straightforward, others less so, but they all wanted money. In the middle of all this ruckus, I was trying to go on with my ordinary but happy life. I didn't care about money, the new house, luxury cars, and all that stuff. My sister started going to a private school. Of course, I didn't change my school. My dad said, okay, but at least let my driver take you there. I said, no, I wanted to take the bus like I used to. The bus stop was a five-minute walk from the school. One day, I got off at the stop and was walking to school while watching a video on YouTube. I felt like I hit something. I looked up and it was a guy. Just as I was about to apologize, he grabbed me and dragged me to an SUV that was parked nearby. I was so shocked I couldn't even scream. Just as he was trying to push me into the back seat of the SUV, we heard a siren. Whoever was in the driver's seat of the SUV was obviously a coward. He hit the gas and drove away without waiting for his friend. The other guy was stunned. After a moment of hesitation, he started running towards the SUV. Naturally, the police followed him. They caught the guy in no time. It turned out these guys were criminals. When they found out my dad had won the lottery, they decided to kidnap his son for ransom. They'd been following me for days. Finally, they decided to go for it. Thankfully, I was saved by a police car that was passing by. I was curious about how much money they would ask for me, but I could never find out. Naturally, my dad was very worried. Mm. And he was right. There could be other people out there who had the same idea. You can't be going to school alone anymore. I'm going to hire a security company. They will drive you around, he said. What? I would be going to school with bodyguards? Dad, that's embarrassing, I was about to say. Justin, I don't want to hear about it. We don't have a choice, he said, and didn't let me protest. That same night, two people came to our house to meet me. They looked exactly like what you would imagine bodyguards to look like. They didn't take their sunglasses off, even inside the house. A guy named Alexander was in charge. Mr. Justin, you need to comply with some rules for us to be able to do our job, he said. What kind of rules? I asked. The first and most important rule is you can't go anywhere without us. 
The second rule is that you can only have one person with you at any time, at school or outside. I turned to my dad in shock. What do you mean? Dad? And will my friends take turns to hang out with me? I asked. My dad didn't respond. Thank you, Alexander. We will do as you say. We're expecting you at 7 a.m. tomorrow, he said as they left. The following day was one of the most embarrassing days of my life. My dad called the school's administration and told them about the kidnapping, and they let the bodyguards into the school. The whole day, the two bodyguards were following me wherever I went. And of course, everyone was staring at us. The worst part was that they waited by the door while I was in the bathroom. I called my friends the night before and told them about the bodyguards. I told them that only one person would be allowed to come near me. Our first meeting the next morning was really upsetting. When I saw my friends, I forgot about the bodyguards and wanted to go to them. But Alexander stood between us and stopped me. After that, Chris came running to me alone. Jamie and Matt had to watch us from a distance. This wasn't something that we were used to, but there was nothing we could do about it. We had to play along for some time. Nearly a month went by. I thought I'd eventually get used to it, but that did not happen. I was still very uncomfortable walking around with bodyguards. The worst thing was that my relationship with my friends suffered a lot more than I could imagine. We used to hang out at school, and then afterwards we'd go to an abandoned paint factory. It had been empty for years. We called it the Grey Castle. We used to hang out there without anyone bothering us. But now we couldn't see each other at school, nor at the Grey Castle. I was so sad to see Jamie, Chris, and Matt drifting away from me. They were my best friends. I had to do something quickly to fix my relationship with them. The only way I could hang out with my friends was to get rid of the bodyguards. Otherwise, they would never let me go. Alexander and the other guy brought me home around four every day, stood in front of our house until six, and then left. I couldn't wait for their workday to be over because by then it would be too late. I decided I would run out through the backyard, go to the Grey Castle and surprise my friends. When I came home, I went to my mom holding my head. I told her, Mom, I have a terrible headache. I'm going to take a nap. My room is downstairs. As soon as I got in, I changed my clothes and jumped out to the backyard. The bodyguards were by the front door, so they didn't hear a thing. I took the bus from the other side of the block and rode towards the Grey Castle. I think my acting was too good. My mom thought a headache that bad wouldn't go away with a nap. She came to my room with a glass of water and a painkiller. She saw that I wasn't there. She thought I went to the bathroom... But after a while, when my sister came out of the bathroom, they figured out I wasn't at home. My mom panicked and let the bodyguards know. They called me first, and then when I didn't pick up, they called my dad. The first thing they thought was that I got kidnapped. So they decided to call the police. The police got on it right away and quickly figured out my location by tracking the signal from my cell phone. <laughs> I had actually seen Alexander's call. He must be calling to tell me something about tomorrow. I'll call him when I get back, I thought. Sometimes he'd call and say, Heavy traffic expected for tomorrow morning. Let's leave 15 minutes early, or something like that. My plan was to spend a few hours with my friends and come back to my room through the window. But when they realized I was gone, things got crazy. My family and the bodyguards were rightfully worried. Meanwhile, I was happily chatting with my friends at the Grey Castle, totally unaware of what was going on. We had so much to catch up on since we hadn't seen each other properly for weeks. I was doing an impersonation of Alexander, mocking him for taking his job too seriously. Suddenly we heard sirens outside. Then we heard the loudspeaker. This is the police! You are surrounded! Put your hands up and come out now! Police? We looked at each other in shock. What was happening? Was it a hidden camera prank? We put our hands up like they said and walked outside. There were cops everywhere. Soon the police found out what was going on. Hmm. No one had kidnapped me. I'd run off to meet with my friends while everyone was looking for me. They picked us up from the empty factory building and took us to the police station. My dad, my two bodyguards, and the families of my friends were waiting for us there. I was so worried about having caused such a big scene. But my dad comforted me. Justin, I get you, son. This money brought a lot of good things into our lives, but it also caused a lot of issues, he said. Dad, I was really happy with my friends. I want to hang out with them, I said, and he put his hand on my shoulder and said, I'll fix this. I got an idea as I was waiting for you, he said. 
Do you know what my dad's brilliant idea was? To buy the Grey Castle. Yes, he found the owner of the building, made the guy an offer, and turned that place into a playground for us. Then I understood that being rich is not so bad after all. After school, the bodyguards take us to the Grey Castle. We finish our homework in the library first, because that's Dad's condition. And then we do whatever we want to do. Some days we play PlayStation on a giant screen in the game room. Sometimes we have a tournament in the bowling alley. And sometimes we watch a movie in our private screening room. When we play basketball on the court outside, the bodyguards join us as well. By the way, I have to tell you that Alexander can really play. Hi friends, I'm Constance. I'm 15 years old. Two years ago, a billionaire family adopted me. That's how I got this life I couldn't even imagine having. Now I'm going to tell you all about it, both the good and the bad parts. I'm sure you'll find my story interesting. Please don't forget to like the video. My dad left us when I was a baby. My mom used to tell me all the time that he wasn't a good person and we were better off without him. But I still grew up imagining greeting my father at the door when he came home from work at the end of the day and receiving a huge, <laughs> loving hug from him. My mom didn't have a profession. She'd work any job she could get. When she got sick, she was unemployed for a long time. Because she couldn't take care of me, she left me at a group home when I was nine. But every week, she would come and visit me. She used to say, when I'm doing better, I'll get us a nice house. We'll live together again. But she lived on the street, and us having a life together seemed like a very remote possibility. The next year, my mom stopped visiting me. I got worried because that wasn't normal. I asked for help from the social workers at the home. I found out that my mom was hospitalized because her health was deteriorating. After a while, when I heard that she had died, I was devastated. Even though I was very young, I was aware that my mom had lost her life to poverty. They took good care of us at the home, but we all wanted to get adopted, to have a family. Kids who would fit their criteria would be recommended to prospective adoptive families by the management of the home. The families would look at their options, meet the kids, and then make their decision. Families usually preferred kids aged four to five. Kids that age were easier to look after because they weren't babies anymore, and they were still young enough to be raised by the family as they wished. I, on the other hand, was 13 years old. Because I hit puberty, my prospects of being adopted had further diminished. In fact, they were almost non-existent. One day, the director of the home called me. She said I fit this one family's criteria, and she wanted to introduce me to them. This family had an eight-year-old son. They didn't have any other children. They were worried that their son would be all alone in the future. They wanted an older sister who could support him and decided to adopt a girl my age. This was a huge surprise for me. They were about to walk into the director's office. As I was waiting for them, I was so excited that my feet were shaking. Thankfully, our first meeting went great. They told me they really liked me, and they could definitely see me as a wonderful older sister for their son. When the director said, Constance, gather your belongings and say goodbye to your friends. Your new family lives in another city. They will be leaving with you today. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Finally, I would have a family too. There were three luxury cars waiting for us in front of the home. We got into the one in the front. The other two followed us. This was going to be my first plane ride. I'd seen the airport only in the movies. I told my new mom, are we going to buy a ticket for me from the airport? And she smiled. <laughs> you don't need a ticket, honey, she said. I figured out what she meant by that when we arrived at the airport. My new family had their own private plane. I, of course, didn't yet know that they were billionaires. Their fortune came from gold and silver mines in different spots around the world. I could only dream of such a rich family adopting me, but thankfully this wasn't a dream. The director at the home had said we were going to another city, but the plane landed not in a city, but on an island. This island in the middle of the ocean, of course, belonged to them. There was just this one house on the whole island. It was the biggest building I'd ever seen. I didn't even know they were called mansions. There was a ship docked on the shore. Do I need to tell you? That too belonged to my new family. Soon I would find out it wasn't called a ship, but a yacht. I wasn't aware of it yet, but I'd started living the life of a billionaire. This is where I met my brother Parker. He didn't seem like an eight-year-old at all. He was dressed exactly like an adult. I was going to be his sister from now on. I made a move to give him a hug, but Parker held himself back and offered his hand coldly. 
I shook his hand, saying, Hi, Parker. I'm Constance. Parker looked at his mom with a displeased look on his face. Constance? Apparently, he didn't like my name. His mom, I mean my new mom, turned to me and said, Darling, people have more modern names in our social circle. Rather than Constance, shall we call you Jasmine from now? I knew my name was old-fashioned, but it was my mom who had given it to me. Still, I couldn't say anything. I just nodded. There was a large number of staff in the house. Cooks, drivers, butlers, maids. In addition to all this, they told me I had a personal maid, too. This person came and said, let me show you to your room. She was a girl four or five years older than me. Her name's Mary Jane. When she led me to my room, I couldn't believe my eyes. Even this room was screaming, this is a billionaire's house. There was a bed five people could sleep in. There were armchairs around, paintings on the walls. I was a 13-year-old girl, but this room looked more like it belonged to the Queen of England. I wanted to get some information on my new family from Mary Jane. She was hesitant at first, but then she started talking to me when we became friendly. The family spends a few months every summer on the island. Because my new mom doesn't like staying in hotels, they have houses in many cities, each one more luxurious than the other. The yacht I saw on the dock is the smallest they have. The one they most frequently use is at least three times bigger than this one. Every time Mary Jane said something, I kept blurting out, Really? She smiled and replied, really. I learned such fantastic things in that conversation, and I probably said really at least 20 times. The next day, something strange happened. There was a screening room in the house. Parker and I were watching a movie there. Mary Jane came and told me my new dad was waiting for me in his study. When I went in, he was with another man in a suit. My new dad said, Welcome to our family, my dear. Let me introduce you to our attorney, Mr. Owens. We have a couple of legal matters we need to take care of. When the attorney said, Jasmine, I drew up some contracts regarding certain matters. I'm asking you to read and sign them, please. I was really surprised. After this, the attorney gave me the documents one by one and told me what each one was about. This document is for the name change. We'll file a petition and your name will be changed to Jasmine. This document is an agreement about inheritance. In the future, you will be a part of the will, but your inheritance will be smaller compared to Parker's. This contract is about social media usage. You're prohibited from opening TikTok or Instagram accounts and sharing information about the family in any other way. Finally, this contract is for your allowance. Every month, you will be given an allowance of this amount written here. You will not be able to demand more than that. After telling me all this, the attorney offered me a pen and said, please sign under every agreement. I didn't like this one bit, but I wasn't in a position to argue. I had to sign them all. We stayed on the island for about a month. It was nowhere near the life I dreamed of. Parker and my new dad were distant to me. My new mom would talk to me now and then, but it was more in the lines of, how are things with Parker? What kind of things are you doing together? Unfortunately, my replies were not the kinds of things she would want to hear. I wanted to be closer to my new brother, but it wasn't possible because Parker had built this really high wall between us. My new dad had some work to do. So one morning, our private jet arrived on the island and took us to London. After a while, we went to Tokyo. We stayed there for only three days. Then we flew to the city where the family actually lived. We were always traveling on our private plane and staying in our own homes, whichever city we went to. When I was younger, I wanted to travel to different countries. But these trips were not at all like what I imagined them to be. Because of security reasons, we almost never went out. When you are inside a house, it doesn't really matter if you're in London or Tokyo. Two and a half years ago, the Mafia attempted to kidnap Parker. Thankfully, bodyguards stopped them. The kidnappers confessed that they tried to take Parker and asked for a ransom of $50 million. After that incident, security measures were enhanced. It was deemed dangerous for Parker to go to school and decided that he should be homeschooled with private tutors. Now that I was their daughter, the same security measures applied to me. I was devastated when I found out about this. I was feeling incredibly lonely. I was looking forward to starting school, making new friends. If I was homeschooled, then the only kid around me would be Parker, and he did not like me at all. I'd always wanted to get adopted, to have a family, but this was definitely not what I had dreamed of. At first, I loved that my new family was very rich. But then I saw that everything was good in moderation, and that included having an excessive amount of money. I think Parker wasn't happy with his life either, but he wasn't admitting it. My new mom went to another city on a business trip. I thought about going back to the group home without telling her, but then I thought that wouldn't be right. I waited for her. 
When she came back, I went to speak with her. I told her Parker didn't feel the need for a sister and he would never accept me as one. She thought I was right. You're right, honey. Unfortunately, this was an unsuccessful attempt. You're free to do what you want to do. I told her I wanted to go back to the group home, but she suggested something else that changed my life in an instant. I was going to go to a private boarding school. They would obviously cover all my expenses. After high school, if I decided to go to college, they would give me a scholarship. Right now, I'm at a wonderful private school in Switzerland. Since it's a very expensive boarding school, the families of the kids here are pretty rich. But as far as I knew, there are no billionaires among them. Meanwhile, my new mom gives me a call now and then and insists that I spend my summer vacation with them. Even Parker called me once and invited me. I think I'm going to spend the summer on the island. If anything interesting happens, I'll definitely let you know. Goodbye for now. <laughs>